gentlemen, please welcome your favorite diva, Kathy Griffin. I'm so thrilled you're here. I really, really appreciate it. Let's get down to work. We have a lot to cover. Um, don't you love the new Crazy Britney? Oh. She's our new Liza! All right, first of all, you know, I like all the Britneys. I like the original Britney, where she was just a hometown girl and innocent and somehow became a pop sensation. Then I like the, you know, the Justin years, and then I love it when they broke up, and then she became slutty Britney. And she's banging Fred Durst and denying it later. And wouldn't you? And, you know, she goes out with Colin Farrell and he's got her in that chokehold, like, you know, later on that night, she's gonna go, I know there's a shiner there, but if you only knew him, I love... <laughs> and now, I mean, is it weird that I'm more excited about Britney's wedding than my own? I love the wedding. Okay, first of all, I love imagining the call that Britney made to her mom the day after the wedding. <laughs> Mama, get the charter and the lawyers and get up here, I did something wrong. <laughs> I love her excuse that she was just taken away by the lights of Vegas, because she's never been there. And, and you know the whole time this is all going down, you know that my girl Christina is just at home, like maybe having some Cheetos saying, you know what, I'm just a whore and now nobody cares. <laughs> I said I was a whore from the beginning, I was consistent, and nobody thinks I'm crazy anymore. I love it. All right, could Britney have picked a worse guy? First of all, not that hot. Secondly, how country is this guy? I saw this guy on Access Hollywood, and he literally said, I guess I shouldn't have did it. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Britney, grammar, grammar. All right. I love all my crazy... Oh, I had a run-in with Whitney Houston. Are you in? Yeah. Okay. Or as I call her, cracky. <laughs> Allegedly. 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 All right. Of course I love Whitney Houston. I'm completely fascinated by her, and here's why. I actually share one thing with Whitney, which is I also have sweating issues. Um, I guess you've noticed that when Whitney performs, she has so much flop sweat. It's almost as if someone has like put a prop in one of her wigs. You know, with like prop tubes and someone's backstage like just pouring water out of them. <laughs> She is just mopping herself off. And you know the wig is always like a little askew and kind of crazy and... <laughs> like she just put it on with a cracked compact, like I guess it's straight. <laughs> and... And I love that now she just sings with a rag. Have you noticed that? Because she knows she's gonna sweat. So she's, she'll do like her gesturing with the, like the big Kleenex or paper towel and mop herself off like, oh no, Maria Collis did this too. It's very normal. I just will be mopping myself off during the song. And I just love when people go crazy in public. I love when that, you know, People Magazine cover story. I love the intervention. I, um, I love Promises, you know, that rehab place in Malibu where, where Ben Affleck went and now everything's fine. Um, <laughs> All right, so a couple years ago, I hosted an award show, right? It was the Billboard Music Awards, which was great for me because it's on Fox and so nobody really watches it, but <laughs> it's live so I can kind of do whatever I want. All right, so I'm there, and the great thing about hosting a show like that is that you get to see all the backstage dirt, right? Like, I saw um, Courtney Love have one of her heroin fits and break a guitar, and I pulled up a chair, and then, <laughs> well, you gotta be ringside. All right, and then I hear on the walkie-talkies, Whitney Houston's in the building. So I was like, Courtney, I gotta go. So, I run down 
downstairs in like the rehearsal area to see her come in. And the funny thing is, backstage at an award show is like the safest place on the planet because you have to have this laminate and this wristband and all that stuff. So Whitney Houston shows up literally with a circle of bodyguards, right? And there are all these big giant guys with the football necks and stuff. And I just wanted to see it, so I just ran down there. And when she walked in, I have to say it was a really cool, like diva moment. You know, she was everything that you would hope she would be. So she walks in and she's got the security guys around her. And she's just doing this great thing, like greeting everyone like, hey baby. Look good. Call me. But while, while she's doing that, I know, my impression was dead on. It's freaky. Freaky. I know. It's like she was here. Um, only I can stand. All right, but anyway, allegedly, that was awful. All right, so while she's doing that, her circle of bodyguards is indiscriminately just pushing people on the floor like this. I was like, wow, that is so tough that you just knocked down the sound guy. <laughs> all right. Okay, so anyway, the, there's this whole hierarchy with celebrities all about who's too famous to come rehearse too early, right? So most award shows are at 5 o'clock. So, you know, if you're me, you have to be there like three days early. But, <laughs> you know, it's life on the D-list. But if you're Whitney, you show up like two hours before they let the audience in and stuff. So she was the last one to rehearse and all the stuff. So now you know the rumor about Whitney is that she's gay, right? Now I... <laughs> Now, here's the thing. I have no idea if that's true. It probably isn't. But it is a rumor, and that's good enough for me. <laughs> so she shows up, and she does a rehearsal, and it was just amazing and fantastic. And then it's time for her to perform later. So usually when I'm hosting one of these events, I often don't get to meet the artist because I'm getting ready to do my next intro or whatever. So it's time for Whitney to perform, and I go, and I'm in the wings, and then... You know, Whitney goes up, and she was the only one in the whole show, because they had, like, Celine and Shania, and all the big stars were there, but Whitney was the only one who had a bodyguard right off to the side, right? Like, in the movie, The Bodyguard. As if somebody was going to, like, bum rush the stage, and, you know, some guy was going to whisk her off the stage, and run into the alley, and throw her into the limo, and make love to her, except, ooh, he's a guy, and ugh, she doesn't like that. All right, so... I mean, I don't even, you can't go by me. All right. So anyway, um, you know, I didn't even think I would get to meet her or anything. So I'm standing in the wings and I've got my little notes because I'm thinking of whatever my next joke is or whatever. And she goes out there. Oh, and by the way, this is what she was wearing. She's wearing a man's three-piece suit with a tie. Um, <laughs> and she's wearing an overcoat with um, like a fur collar and a fedora. And you know, with her sweating issues. That was not smart. By the end of the song, she's gonna be a puddle in a hat. Don't go away. When we come back, more about Whitney on Kathy Griffin, The D-List. All right. So, so anyway, the other thing I was thinking is I remember seeing an old mugshot of Whitney before she became famous on one of those like Inside Edition or Current Affair or one of those fabulous shows. And I don't know what it was, but I just kind of remembered that, right? So anyway, she goes out and she performs. And let me just say, she blew the roof off the place. I mean, her voice was flawless. It was impeccable. You know, I mean, she's incredibly talented, right? So the uh, bodyguard is standing there and, you know, she comes off and I'm thinking she's just going to walk past me like everybody else, right? All right. So this is what happened. My hand to God, this is true. All right. You guys are me. I'm Whitney Houston. <laughs> You're very funny. Like that, but in like a really weird tone, right? <laughs> Creepy, creepy, and I'm picturing the mug shot. So I said, uh, thank you. Thinking it's over, right? So then she leans in and she goes, you're very funny, like that. At this point, I'm gonna be honest, I have a little pee coming down my leg. gonna lie okay so then she leans in I will never forget this she leans in and she goes like this don't say anything about me okay diarrhea shooting out my And at that moment, 
I realized the bodyguard isn't there to protect her. He watches her kill people and laughs. So, so anyway, you know, she says, don't say anything about me. So obviously she's aware that my act is based on saying, you know, possibly disparaging things about celebrities. Um, not to me, it's really an homage, but... So, so I said, oh, uh, the only thing I said was, um, in your intro, I said that I've seen the bodyguard 57 times, which I have. And she goes like this, okay. Don't say anything else, like that. <laughs> and she walked away, and I've been putting it in my act ever since. <laughs> dream. This is a dream. All right. Now, I've been very open about my status as a D-list celebrity in Hollywood. That's what I am. I'm owning it. You know, you have the A-list with Julia Roberts and Brad Pitt. And then I'd like to think I was kind of, yeah, they're not nearly as talented as me or tall. Anyway, <laughs> and I'd like to think that I was kind of hovering on the sea for a while. And then, you know, once you do the celebrity mole, you jump right to D. <laughs> That's it. There's no coming back. There's no coming back from the celebrity mole. Okay, so anyway, a very, like a typical offer for me is to do um, a little show I like to call Hollywood Squares. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm no stranger to the squares. I've spent the whole day in a square next to Lorenzo Lamas and said, thanks for the gig. All right. <laughs> okay, so you're not gonna believe who I was on Hollywood Squares with. Anna Nicole Smith. <laughs> So I get the call the night before. They want me to do Hollywood Squares on a Saturday because of course there's a fallout. Because when you're on the D-list, you're always the fallout, right? Like I'm on a lot of talk shows, right? But I'm never in TV Guide. Because I'm always, they'll call me and say, yes, yeah, Soleil Moonfry can't make it. Can you do the show? <laughs> and I'm in hair and makeup two hours later. Okay. <laughs> so they call me and they go, can you do Hollywood Squares tomorrow? And I said, yeah. And I go, just out of curiosity, who else is on? And they're going, you know, this person, that person, Anna Nicole Smith. I said, I'm in. So, okay, so I go the next day, and the way Hollywood Squares works is they do three shows in the morning, there's a lunch, and then they do two in the afternoon. So I get there in the morning, and I just keep running out of my dressing room to see when she's going to arrive. Because I want to, I'm down with Anna Nicole Smith. I love her. I like her fat, I like her skinny, I like her drugged up, I like her lucid, I like all... I like all the Anna Nicole Smiths. Okay, and here's why. All right, you guys saw the old fart that she married, right? The one who kicked the bucket? And you know that he left her $500 million. I think she earned every penny. All right, you... No, you've seen pictures of him, all right? Do you want to blow him? Because I don't. I know $500 million is a lot of money. I know that. All I'm saying is... Even if she only gave him one hand job, 500 million. One, one hand job. Cause you know, it was just like. <laughs> just give it to her, just give it to her. I don't want to argue about it anymore. Some of you have given that, like, pukey hand job. Ah, <laughs> uh, the 80s. Okay, so... So I'm, you know, completely fascinated by her. All right, so I keep asking in the morning, when is she coming? And then finally they say, oh, she slept through the whole morning shows. Uh, I'm like, well, what do you mean? And they said, well, she's just going to come in the afternoon. And of course, if that was me, I would be like so ridiculously fired. But you know, what are you going to do, right? You got to drag her out of bed and give her a little something, a little jolt, and uh, get her functional. So, finally, she shows up before lunch, and it was just the way I imagined. She comes with the E-Channel crew, right? She's got the whole posse. She's got Kimmy, the lesbian assistant who's clearly in love with her. <laughs> Allegedly. And then, she's got the, you know, her attorney, Howard K. Stern, that guy who's living off her. And then, she's got her kid, Daniel, who's so sweet. Oh, he's so cute, he's 14, and he's f <laughs> Um, no, you don't recover from your mother being Anna Nicole Smith. It's over. <laughs> See what promises. Okay, so... Yes. 
I will be in the Downey Poundstone wing. All right, so. Oh, wait, I forgot to tell you who I spent the morning with. Okay, so I've already done the first three shows of the morning, and guess who's in the square next to me? Little Richard. Anything can happen over at the square. Stay tuned to hear all about Little Richard and more about Anna Nicole on Kathy Griffin, The D-List. Okay, so anyway, I get, in, I get in my square, right, and I'm next to Little Richard, who, God love him, he's an icon, I respect him tremendously, he's very talented, what a freak. All right. <laughs> He's got like the tattooed lip liner and the mustache is tattooed on, and he's now just wearing a hooker wig. Um, and he's dressed all sparkly. And you know, I mean, you know, he's a showman. Okay, we all know that. So anyway, I sit next to him and I'm thinking, okay, I'm next to little Richard all day. What are we gonna talk about? So I decided to make conversation and we talked about going on the road and all that stuff. And then I just, I turned to him and I said, so what do you think about all this crazy stuff with Michael Jackson? And then Richard says, Michael Jackson's a beautiful person. And I was like, I'm out. Um, <laughs> but the thing that was really great about little Richard is he peppers conversations with the woo, like that. <laughs> Like, you, you could say to him, so, little Richard, you still go on the road? And he'd be like, ooh, child, I get, I get in that car, and I woo I drive to the next gig, and woo and I do my performances, and I woo like that. And it's a little disarming, because you don't know if you're supposed to woo back, or if it's his woo time, or... So, oh, I forgot to tell you this. Okay, so, <laughs> so guess who else is on the show? Another square, Triumph the Insult Comic Dog. This was a great day, and I love that character, and I think the guy who does it, Robert Smigel, is so brilliant. And you know, you know the character, right? He's like this puppet. It's great. And he'll do stuff like he'll go to the Video Music Awards, and he'll like shout at Christina Aguilera, you know, I guess heaven is missing a hooker, you know? Like, <laughs> I just think it's really, really funny. So, so anyway, Triumph decides to really go for Little Richard. So no matter what question Triumph gets, he makes it about Little Richard. All right, so like they'll, they'll ask Triumph you know, a question, and Triumph will say, um, well, I do not know who invented that. Why don't you ask Little Richard? He invented rock and roll and all of the Beatles and the Beach Boys, according to him. Like that, right? <laughs> so Little Richard is next to me, and he's starting to get really pissed. And he starts going like this, who that dog? <laughs> It literally was spelled W H O O O D A T D A W G. So, so anyway, he's getting like upset, right? And then Triumph gets another question, and Triumph says, I do not know, because like little Richard, I poop on both sides of the fence. <laughs> So then, like, the producers have to go over and talk to little Richard and calm him down, and they're trying to explain what Triumph is about, and they're saying, you know, he's this, he's this puppet that's a dog that insults people, and he's, he's on the Conan O'Brien show. Who Conan? <laughs> so, little Richard is fit to be tied, and then the producers have to tell Smigel to, like, take it down a few notches and stuff. All right, so now it's lunchtime, and Anna Nicole shows up, right? So we go up to the lunchroom, and I am determined to get FaceTime with her. I'm determined. So she walks in, and I, th there's an empty seat next to me, and I say, Anna, um, hi, my name is Kathy Griffin. Come sit next to me. So, <laughs> wouldn't you? Okay. So anyway, she sits down, and the E-Crew is filming her. And let me just say, they must have hours and hours of her doing absolutely nothing. Because, and first of all, she was totally out of it, by the way. She was super out of it, allegedly, um, in my opinion. Okay, so anyway, she's f up. Um, So I introduced myself and I said, you know, hi, my name's Kathy. And she says to me, and she looks at me and she goes like this. Hi. <laughs> That's it. That's all she's got. So then her assistant Kimmy brings her this plate of food and she's eating it like this. <laughs> the whole time the cameras are filming her. 
Like, you know, like when it's Christmas and somebody has the camcorder, don't you feel compelled to be like, hi, Merry Christmas. Hi, everybody. Oh, no. That's it. And then she's got the dog, Sugar Pie, right? The little dog who she then puts on the dining room table. I know, and God knows I love dogs. Get that dog off the table. Okay, so anyway, she's eating her food and I'm kind of trying to make small talk. And then all of a sudden she takes a bite of something and she goes like this. I don't like it. I go, what's the matter, honey? And she goes, I don't like it. I thought it was mashed potatoes. Potatoes. I heard it with my own ears. Potatoes. Brittany probably wants to marry her now. So, so anyway, I looked on, on her plate and I said, no, it's, it's polenta. And I swear to God, she looks at me and she goes, Pimento? I said, no, that's, that's an olive. Um, I go, it's, it's polenta, it's like mushed up cornmeal. And then she goes, I don't like it. I thought, I'm like mashed potatoes, I got it. All right, so of course Kimmy is like scrambling to get her new food and she's like, I'll be right back. And she goes and gets something different. In the meantime, Shaka Khan walks by. <laughs> So Shaka Khan, you know, recognizes her, and Shaka Khan, who of course is herself internationally recognized, decides to be very gracious, so she, she walks up to her and she says, Hi Anna, my name is Shaka, and I think your show is great. So Anna Nicole looks at Shaka Khan and goes, Ha! I can't believe it. And Shaka, I swear to God, Shaka's thought bubble was like, no, she didn't. And I'm like, I know. I, I, so then Shaka takes her entourage and she leaves, right? So now Anna Nicole is sitting there and then little Richard walks up. As if he hasn't been through enough. So little Richard, Little Richard walks up to her and she's still sitting at the table eating and Little Richard comes up and he was being so sweet and he does this very sort of grandiose like princely move and he leans down, he kind of bows and he goes like this, hi Anna. <laughs> like that. And so here's the thing, I don't care how out of it you are, everybody in the world knows Little Richard. You could go to the Republic of Chad, and they'd be like, ah, little Richard, um, with that accent. But anyway, so he's down there, and he's kind of stuck down there, and then she just goes, ha. All right, so there's little Richard, kind of stuck in this position, thinking, okay, now what? And then he looks at her in her lap where she has sugar pie. And little Richard totally seriously goes, are you that dog? Don't go away. Coming up next, more celebrity dish you don't want to miss on Kathy Griffin, The D-List. I, um, I was sitting in a restaurant one time here in Los Angeles, and uh, Sharon Stone walks in. Right? And I had met her one other time, but I never know like who knows me or doesn't know me and I never assume anybody does and all that stuff. So I'm sitting there with a couple of friends and Sharon Stone comes in and I wasn't gonna like go up to her and go, oh, hello, Miss Stone, remember me from the thing, you know? So I just kind of was at my table and I was excited to see her, right? So I nudged my friends, I go, look, look, Sharon Stone walked in. So she comes in, she's got the whole entourage. She's got, you know, the nanny and the au pair and the kid, and the assistants and the whole gang, right? So she walks by the table and I just kind of smiled and then she stops and she looked at me, she goes, oh, she goes, we've met, right? And I was all excited, right? So I go, yeah, yeah, we met one time with the thing, the thing. And then she says, oh, I think you're really funny. She said, every time I see you on TV, I watch, I think you're really funny. Well, I'm in heaven, right? I'm just like, what? Go on, what were you? <laughs> I didn't hear you. Because <laughs> you know, it's exciting, right? All right. 
So, you know, she works with AMFAR, the American Federation for AIDS Research. So then she says to me, hey, would you ever host an AMFAR event for me? So, of course, I say yes. And besides the fact that it's a great organization and all that, uh, here's the truth. Um, when Sharon Stone asks you to do something, you just do it. <laughs> you might think you're like, oh, I don't care about the Hollywood types, or I could... No, believe me, if Sharon Stone asked me to eat her poo, <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, what's a good time for you? <laughs> this is really good poo, Sharon, thanks. <laughs> you just, just trust me, you just would. So, so sure enough, stop picturing it and come back. Um, you thought the Anna Nicole Smith hand job was bad. All right. So anyway, sure enough, the next day, the Amphar people call me, and I'm off to New York to host an Amphar event called Seasons of Hope. And by the way, let me just say that at this point, I already had a relationship with Amphar because when I got married, my husband and I did this weird thing where we had people donate to Amphar in lieu of giving us gifts. So I kind of already knew Amphar, although let me just say this. I was so vicious, because I was trying to raise as much money as possible, that I had people just make the checks directly out to Amphar, but I made them send the checks to me so I'd know how much everyone was donating. <laughs> it was great. So I, oh yeah, I was calling my own friends, going like, yeah, you gotta be kidding me with that 25 bucks. <laughs> yeah, you can come to the wedding, but you're not eating. A <laughs> hundred, thanks, see you there. So, so anyway, I really was like trying to raise as much money as possible, right? Okay, so anyway, I'm off to New York, and the more I learn about this event that I'm hosting, the more I realize I'm completely inappropriate for it. Completely. First of all, it's really formal. So I gotta get like the loner gown and I get the loner jewelry. Oh, which by the way, I got this loner jewelry from Bulgari, right? And the way it works is some guy comes to the hotel room, he gives you the jewelry, you sign the insurance thing, and then he's like with you all night. And I was wearing $66,000 of jewelry. So that, yeah. So I'm walking the red carpet and, I'm, and they're saying, you know, oh, what are you looking forward to tonight or whatever? And I'm saying, the only thing I'm nervous about is I don't want to lose an earring. So I'm I'm doing these interviews and then sure enough I reach up and it's gone. <laughs> gone. All right, so Angie Harmon is there, who I don't even know. So I, I'm in such a panic, I can't believe I lost one of these loner expensive earrings. I go up to Angie Harmon, who I don't know, and I go, I lost my earring that's a loner from Bulgari. And she goes, oh <laughs> And so I knew it was bad. I knew it was bad. When Angie cusses, it's bad. So then when I find out, like, first of all, they had it at this place, the Roseland Ballroom in New York, which holds about 2,500 people, which is really big when you're trying to host an event about AIDS and still be funny. <laughs> all right, so I'm getting more and more nervous as I'm there, and then all these other big stars are there, right? So, like, Uma Thurman is there with her big bag of BS. Now, look, I... <laughs> Kill Bill too, don't get me wrong. But first of all, where the hell does she think she's from? You know she's from Boston, with that accent, all right? She's not from, you know, Europea, or wherever she thinks she's from. <laughs> And you know what bugs me about her? I hate these skinny women that have to, like, they're so skinny that they have to walk like this because they're so thin that their legs might not, might not even support their torso anymore. <laughs> I hope I don't collapse just with my bones. That's all I have is bones. Ow. Ow. Ouch. Ow. Ow. All right. So she was there with Ethan Hawke when they were still together and his dirty teeth and everybody was happy. And, um, Kira Sedgwick and Kevin Bacon were there, all these big stars, right? And I'm, I'm hosting, and the way the evening is supposed to go is like this. The evening starts with opening words from Sharon Stone and this woman who's the head of Amphar named Dr. Krim, who I kept calling Dr. Krim Medicine Woman, <laughs> which no one thought was funny but me, no one. So they were gonna do their opening remarks, then there was like an hour long dinner. Then I was supposed to do 20 minutes of stand up, which is a long time to bomb. And then, <laughs> and then I was supposed to give out three awards. And the awards they were giving out were they were giving an award to Kenneth Cole, the shoe guy, because he donated a million bucks to Amphar. They were giving an award to Rosie O'Donnell, who also donated a million bucks to Amphar. And they were giving out an award to Natasha Richardson, who donated her Oscar dress. Come on. <laughs> 
Where's your million? Okay, so... So I get there, and then I've lost my earring, and then um, I go tell the head of the event, I said, you're not going to believe this, I lost my expensive loaner earring, and then she says, oh, you know, well, let's go talk to the, to the guy or whatever. So I think she means some event planner. They take me to the Bulgari guy, like Bulgari. Did you know there's a guy whose really name is Bulgari, and he's Bulgari? <laughs> he's like, you know, Joe, Bul I don't know, not Joe, but Frank Bulgari, or whatever the hell his name is, so... He's like a prince or something. So anyway, they take me up and they're like, this is Kathy Griffin. She's our hostess. And we have some bad news. She lost one of her earrings. So I think the guy's going to say like, oh, Miss Griffin, that's what insurance is for. No, he looks at me and he goes like this. Great. Like that. Like, the worst reaction. And then on the spot, they make me give him the other one. They're like, just give us the other one. Like, it was so humiliating. So I know. So. So then I see Rosie Perez, who I love, right? And I'm really nervous. And I said, Rosie, I'm going to do some stand-up tonight. You know, please laugh at whatever I say. And she's like, oh, I think you're so great. Don't worry about it. I'm like, okay. I'm trying to actually, like, pay people to laugh. Like, I'm handing out fives. And I know, you know, because the crowd was very, like, middle-aged, very wealthy, altruistic, very formal, black tie. You know, not my peeps. You guys are my peeps. They were not my peeps. And thank you for being my peeps. So... Okay, so now I know, I, I'm sitting in the front table, and then Sharon Stone walks in with her very good friend Vera Wang. And yes, they're very close as long as Vera keeps giving her the dresses. All right, so no, that's a friendship based in love. Okay, so, so anyway, um, the show, you know, kind of starts, and I'm just getting more and more nervous, and I'm looking around, and I'm thinking, oh God, this isn't my crowd, and I'm changing my material, right? Because I'm having like little stories to tell, and I look down at my list, and it's all like vagina jokes, and you know, and I'm I'm thinking, yeah, these people do not want to hear about my vagina. Not that it isn't exciting, because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of activity in this area. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, not tonight. Okay, so... So anyway, I'm really nervous and stuff. And then, you know, the evening begins, and uh, Dr. Krim, medicine woman, goes up there. And she does her speech, and it's very moving and very touching. And I'm just getting more and more nervous, right? So anyway, then she gets down, and uh, I go up to Rosie O'Donnell, who I love, right? And I said, Rosie, look around this room. I go, this is not my crowd. I said, I'm supposed to do 20 minutes of actual stand-up, and, you know, I think that's too much. So Rosie O'Donnell says, look, I've done a million of these things. You showed up, you're in a nice dress. If they don't get you, screw them, just give up the awards, we all go home. So I was like, oh, great. So anyway, then, I'm in, right? So then I go up to Sharon Stone, who, you know, couldn't be nicer, and she looks incredibly beautiful and stuff, so I go up to Sharon Stone, and I go like this. I go, Sharon, um, just so you know, I uh, was just talking to Rosie, and basically Rosie said, you know, if I feel like the audience isn't really into it, maybe we don't do the stand-up part. Maybe we just give out the awards and go home. All right, so Sharon Stone says to me, Rosie O'Donnell is afraid you're going to be funnier than her and steal her thunder. <laughs> When we come back, find out what happens with Rosie and Sharon on Kathy Griffin, The D-List. I'm not a religious woman, but I felt so close to God at that moment. It was heaven. All right, so, of course I pull up a chair. What? What were you saying? Something horrible about a celebrity? What? I'm sorry. So then... I couldn't believe she said it. I was like, I don't know what's going on with these two ladies, but I'm all over it. So, so then she goes, she goes, look, we're going to be sitting here bored, eating our fruit cups. Go up there and be outrageous and make us laugh, which I took as a license to kill. So, so anyway, I'm sitting there getting more nervous, and now it's time for Sharon Stone to go up and do her, like, opening statements, right? So she goes up, and she looks, she holds the podium, she looks out the audience, and she says, totally seriously, she goes like this, you know, um... I've spoken about this topic so many times, I don't know if there's anything new I can say about it. So I'm going to read you something I once read a long time ago. Like that. Everyone's like, what is she talking, you know? So, <laughs> right? You don't know. It's kind of weird, right? Okay, so then, so she takes out a piece of paper and she goes like this, totally seriously. She goes like this. Imagine there's 
No heaven. <laughs> it's easy if you try. No hell below us. Above us only sky. Okay. At this point, I get what I call the church giggles. <laughs> laughing inappropriately <laughs> at an inappropriate time and you can't stop no matter what I mean I got the shoulders going like this I'm crying a little bit here's the thing Sharon Stone is reciting the lyrics to imagine and crying at her own performance that's funny I'm only human all right so then she stops and she goes, um, wow, um, that reminds me, um, I was walking down the street here in New York many years ago and uh, I passed a man and he passed me and I went, whoa, that's John Lennon. And I smiled at him and he smiled at me. In the meantime, I'm watching this thinking, oh, I thought John was so into Yoko. No, he's cruising in the park, hitting on Sharon Stone. And then she goes, she goes, and uh, we smiled at each other and uh, walked away. You may say, I'm a dreamer. <laughs> All right, she finishes, right? I look around and there are people literally moved to tears, right? They're like, <laughs> I'm Because <laughs> if they love that, they're not gonna like me and my vagina jokes. <laughs> So now I'm even more nervous. And then, you know, Dr. Crim Medicine Woman is like, and now we will have dinner break and then comedy lady. So it was. <laughs> so I'm a nervous wreck. And now I have an hour to get more nervous. So I'm sitting at my little front table and I know they just love that Sharon Stone moment. And I'm sitting there and then Rosie O'Donnell comes over to my table, sits down and she goes like this. Is she out of her mind? <laughs> So, oh, by the way, in the meantime, Sharon Stone's right behind us. So I'm like, ha ha ha, keep it down, Rosie, because she's like, she's the white Whitney Houston, she'll cut you. I mean, right? She's a little scary. So, so anyway, Rosie O'Donnell goes like this. All right, look, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go up there and I want you to recite the lyrics to Itsy Bitsy Spider. <laughs> very amusing idea. I said, Rosie, I go, I can't. I go, I'll never get away with it. First of all, it's your big night. They're honoring you. Secondly, it's your bit. You do it. And then she goes, no, no, no. It's perfect for you. Yeah. And I realize I'm back in Catholic grade school. She's the kid sitting next to me, getting me to throw spitballs at the nun. The nun turns around and she's like, I've never seen her before in my life. So, so I said, I go, I don't know. I don't think I can get away with it. So then Rosie O'Donnell says, if you do this, I will donate $10,000 to Anfar in the name of your wedding. That's a lot of money, right? You know, and I'm trying to, okay. So I go, all right, let me think about it. Maybe I can, you know, soften it up a little. Let me think about it. Because I know I'm gonna have to take a bullet. Okay, so. So she walks away and I'm going over my notes and I'm going, God, 10,000, that's a lot of money to raise. All right, so then Darren Starr, the creator of Sex in the City, he walks over to my table and he says, I'm in for five. <laughs> and I said, how do you even know about this? And then he goes, oh, Rosie's going table to table. Let me think about it, but I'm thinking 15 grand, that's impressive, right? So I, you know, the dinner finishes, um, Dr. Crim Medicine woman goes up there, gives me the worst intro of all time. You know, she's like, and that is why they will all be dead. And now Kathy Griffiths. Like, <laughs> and so I go up to a total smattering of applause. I, to I go to the full on like, 
you know, people are like finishing their dinner. They, most of them don't know who I am. They're kind of busy. A few of them are clapping. And then I look in the front row and I see Rosie and all the power lesbians and they're like this. <laughs> they're all excited, right? So. I look out, and I'm thinking, ah, hell, if you're gonna do it, do it. So I said, um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so honored to be here. And Sharon spoke so eloquently before <laughs> that it reminded me <laughs> of something I once read a long time ago. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> Crying. All the time. Oh gosh, oh, that reminds me. Many years ago, I was walking down the street in Memphis and um, I passed a man and he passed me and I went, whoa, that's Elvis. And I f***ed him. Hard. I did. I did. And sure, he called me Scylla the whole time, but I didn't mind. <laughs> you ain't never been a rabbit. <laughs> and you ain't no friend of mine. All right, so I, I look in the audience, and first of all, let me say, the bit, I would say it went well with like half the audience, which is far exceeded my expectations, right? <laughs> so I look at the audience and I can see Sharon Stone and she's doing that thing that famous people have to do when they're being made fun of, but people are watching. So she's laughing way too hard. So I can see her going like this. <laughs> she's good, she's good. <laughs> She didn't do that, but I knew she wanted to kill me. You know, I would have killed me. And so, um, so anyway, she, she was actually a really, really big sport about it. And so I was feeling a little full of myself, right? So I'm like, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I had neglected to look down at my program to see that the next person I'm introducing is Sharon Stone. Yeah. So I'm like, thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Our next presenter is... Um, <laughs> A woman who is not only beautiful and talented, but also has a sense of humor about herself and knows that jokes come from love. I'm just eating shit and backtracking as fast as I can. Ladies and gentlemen, Sharon Stone. So she comes up, she does this thing where she fake slaps me and I like fake fell down and she was very sweet and very gracious about it. I even talked to her a little more that night. Um, you know, haven't heard from her since. Uh, which I'm sure is a typo somewhere. But let me just say, two weeks later, in the mail at my house, I got a check from Rosie O'Donnell for $10,000 made out to Amphar. Thank you and good night. You guys have been awesome. Some of that other stuff doesn't cut together. Way to go, Kathy! Yeah!